Let's talk about something we use every day, the ubiquitous door hinge. A door hinge allows rotation about one axis. All other relative motion between the wall and the door is constrained. Thus we say it is a one degree of freedom joint. Now how many hinges does a door really need? Well, theoretically, it only needs one. However, for additional strength and support, most doors use two or three hinges. But it's important to note that these additional joints represent what are called redundant constraints. From a pure motion perspective, they are not needed. In fact, motion software that uses idealized joints, like the Revolut joint that corresponds to a door hinge, for example, must eliminate redundant constraints before a solution can be obtained. If you do not remove additional constraints, the software will typically do it for you, but you have no control over which constraints are removed to make the system non-redundant. Now, if you really want to model a door with two or three hinges, you will need to add compliant force elements like bushings that have different stiffness in different directions. However, such force elements do not add or remove degrees of freedom like idealized joints do. Now, with a door and a hinge, it's pretty easy to identify redundant constraints. But in complex mechanisms, it can be a difficult task. For example, consider the familiar hook joint. It might be tempting to just build it using three revolute joints as shown. However, while not intuitively obvious, this creates redundant constraints and conflicting constraints at that. Thus, a simulation with this configuration will fail as shown in the message. If we do a model verification, we get the message that the Grubler count is minus three. Now, the Grubler count is a way to help identify redundant constraints. Let's see how it works. A free body in space has six degrees of freedom, or DOF. These are the number of independent ways it can move. Adding any kind of joint takes out one or more degrees of freedom. The Grubler count of a system is defined as the number of degrees of freedom of the system before any constraints are applied, minus the degrees of freedom removed from constraints. The idea is that this should give us the number of degrees of freedom of the system. The Grubler count is equal to the number of moving parts times six, minus the degrees of freedom removed by joints or constraints. As an example, consider the planar mechanism shown. Each revolute joint allows rotation about a single axis and allows no translational motion. Thus, it removes five degrees of freedom. The applied motion on one of the revolute joints removes one degree of freedom. The resulting Grubler count is minus three. A negative number means the mechanism is over-constrained. But a positive count does not necessarily mean that the mechanism is not overconstrained. How can we fix this problem? First imagine that one of the joints does not exist. Then we have two independent mechanisms that must rotate in plane. So all we need to do is make sure the ends of the two links always remain along a line perpendicular to the page. This is called an inline constraint and it removes two degrees of freedom. An inline joint is an example of a joint primitive. It may be difficult or impossible to build in practice, but it does the trick of mathematically removing the redundant constraint. And for a motion solver to work, redundant constraints must first be removed. Calculating the Gruber count with the inline constraints gives a value of zero, meaning the motion is fully prescribed. Note that if we remove the motion, the system would have one degree of freedom. In other words, it is now free to articulate but the motion of all parts is determined by specifying the motion of any one part. Consider now a double pendulum with a plate that can swing about the bottom pendulum link. Let's perform the Grubler count for this mechanism. We see that the count is one. This would suggest that the mechanism has one degree of freedom, but this is not true. The inline joint is redundant, and if we removed it, we would have a Grubler count of three. Now by inspection, we can see that the mechanism has three independent motions the two pendulum rotations, and the rotation of the plate about one of the links. Thus, the Gruber count gives the correct number of degrees of freedom, but only if there are no redundancies. Now let's get back to the hook joint. In order to make the system non-redundant, we need to change all three revolute joints to cylindrical joints. A cylindrical joint allows rotation about one axis like a revolute joint, but it also allows translation along the rotational axis. While it's very hard to see, a slight amount of translation is required at each joint to prevent binding, as shown in the plot. Another interesting fact about hook joints is that the output shaft does not rotate at constant velocity if the input shaft does, but rather oscillates a bit depending on the angle between the input and output shaft center lines. Thus, a modified hook joint called a constant velocity or CV joint is often used instead.